Hey everyone, welcome back to this video series on building React pipeline using open source large language models. In this video, we will dive deep into advanced RAG. I know we had part two where we discussed advanced RAG, but one video is not enough. In our previous video, we discussed a uh, topic such as parent document retriever, Coher re-ranking and Langchain expression language. In this video, we will try to implement Ensemble retriever that combines our keyword retriever and vector search retriever. Now, what do we mean by keyword retriever? Let's understand it in detail with few examples. Uh, we have an algorithm named as BM25. BM25 is a ranking algorithm that is used for information retriever, such as search engines. Now, when you started learning machine learning, one of the common use case that we build is recommendation system. And when we implement rec recommendation system, the keyword plays a very important role in the description of your movies or any other data set you have. Based on the keyword, you try to recommend uh, the relevant movies. Now, suppose if I want to watch Harry Potter, uh, when I use a recommendation system, I need to have movies, which is very similar to Harry Potter. That's where we introduce to a concept called as TFIDF. Now, TFIDF stands for Term Frequency and IDF stands for Inverse Document Frequency. So using this algorithm, we are able to extract the number of times the uh, keyword has been repeated. And there are a few more uh, terms which have been used in order to calculate BM25 score, but let's understand an intuition behind it before we dive deep into it. Let's imagine you have a document and not just a single document, but you have a multiple documents. In your first document, you have information related to smartphones. In your second document, you have information related to artificial intelligence. And in third, you have information related to uh, VR or ER. So now if you look at your multiple documents, you have different kinds of data. So these are sample data as of now. Now what you do is you bring on a user and this particular user, he writes a prompt. Now this prompt can be related to latest advancement in smartphones. So when a user asks a prompt, which is related to smartphones, it's pretty obvious that it needs to extract the context from the first document. Why? Because my first document is related to smartphones. So uh, if you look at the BM25 scores, obviously the first document will have the higher score compared to the other two documents. Because in my document two, I have data related to artificial intelligence. And in my data three, I have information related to virtual reality. And those two documents doesn't even make sense when I have a prompt that is related to smartphones. This is where the high score goes to document one. Now, how do we find this particular score? This is where we have a BM25. And in BM25, let me break down a few of the values. Now in the formula, D stands for document, which is being evaluated. Then we have Q, which is the search query. Uh, search query can be the user query. And then we have a function where you are calculating the frequency of term in the given document. And you also have N to the power of QI, which is the number of documents, which has been containing by that particular term. Now, N stands for the total number of documents in the collection. And uh, the magnitude of D is the length of number of words that have been present in your original document, which is D that you are evaluating. In our case, the document will be all those three documents on which we are trying to evaluate. And then we have average DL, which is nothing but your average document length in the given collection. And then we have two extra parameters which is K and B, these are nothing but the tuning parameters. Now, once you add this formula, uh, you just have to break down all the keywords and the major keywords that are used in my particular document are latest smartphone technology. You just have to count the number of term frequency. That is the number of times it has been repeated. And then you need to check the document length. And there are various other parameters that you need to calculate. And you just directly have to implement it using BM25 score. And once you calculate this particular formula, you get certain value. So based on this value, you just rank your document. So this is what you mean by keyword retriever. So now let's understand how we can implement hybrid search. 
in hybrid search when we talk about lang chain you have already been familiar with how we can use a vector database as the retriever in our case we will use bm25 as our keyword retriever and along with keyword retriever we will also use our vector search as the retriever by combining both of these two it forms an ensemble retriever so this is what we will feed into our retrieval qa chain now in retrieval qa chain we usually need a retriever that has the context of our data and we'll have a prompt template that adds the user query and then we'll have a large language model since this is the series of open source large language models we will use zephyr let's get to the best part of this video that is code implementation in this collab notebook we will implement chat with scan pdf now why scan pdf in my previous video on advanced rag there was a comment saying that can you implement a rag pipeline on a scan pdf so this is the video for you so what we need to do is in the pdf there might be cases where you have only images rather than text and this image contains lots of text but you can't directly extract the text why because it is an image that's where we have a extra loader that we have in langchain that is unstructured loader and it has different uh, unstructured when we talk about you have unstructured pdf loader you have unstructured docs loader you also have unstructured file loader in our case since our file is pdf we will use unstructured pdf loader and let's quickly install few libraries the first library is simple uh, we import langchain and then we have rank 25 which is our uh, keyword retriever which we will use uh, that is nothing but um, bm25 retriever and then we have pi pdf because our data is a pdf and since our pdf is a scan pdf we will use unstructured pdf and finally we have a chroma that is our vector database and if you look at this four commands this four commands is basically used when you are working on ocr and now why ocr since our data is scan pdf it will contain only images and in order to extract the text from the image you need ocr and the python library that makes this possible is pytestrack we also have testrack ocr uh, which is the dependencies we need to install and the library testrack the developer tool so these are the four commands uh, it's rather very simple you just copy it and you will find the code in the description link so you need to check out the link and also do make sure that you are checking out the previous two videos so that you can easily follow this particular notebook and this is a normal step so if you look at this code now this four step you have already implemented in the earlier video it's very simple you have your data you do the text splitting or chunking and then you create the embedding of it that is nothing but you convert your text into the vectors and once you have the vector form you store that in a chroma that is nothing but our vector database and there are various open source vector database that we can use we are vv8 we will probably use different vector database in our upcoming video so that we have diversity in using different loaders or different components so it's something very fun that we need to explore and probably we'll have this play a video series very long so that we can try out different vector database different large language model different uh, embeddings so it's fun when we explore now coming to the last four lines uh, we have a hint face up which is the main fundamental block of the generator model in rag then we have chat prompt template now chat prompt template is mainly used when you need to augment your prompt then we have structured output parser uh, whatever your output result should be in. and we have runnable pass through like whenever you want to write any query uh, user doesn't ask that query so you just have to pass that so this is added for langchain expression language which is very simple so you might be familiar with it once you have watched part 2 of the video but that's fine coming to the next part we need to use our again face access token and store it inside the environment variable now why do we do this since we are using open source models from again face uh, via again face up we need to have the access token that's where we need to get the access token and how do we get this token it is already explained in the video one you can check check the description so let's start with the code before you start with the code you need to upload your uh, what you call you need to upload your data in my case it is scan pdf let's see what is inside our data 
let me save it and show it to you what is inside it. I'll open it. So if you look at this particular data set, I just randomly downloaded any scanned PDF online. If you look at this particular uh, cursor, I'm unable to copy anything. So if I enter control A, I'm currently entering control A on my system, but I'm unable to select anything. That means this particular data is an image and not a text. So we need to pay very close attention. This particular PDF is an image and not a text. So we use unstructured uh, loader, which is unstructured PDF loader. So let's start with the code. I have the path and the path is scan PDF. And then I'll use my loader. Now, what is my loader? It's nothing but unstructured PDF loader. Copy it, add my path. And once I add my path, I need to load my data load my data from the loader, simple. So it's gonna take some time. The reason why it will take some time is because your data is an image. You need to run the OCR and extract the content. So that's it, uh, it has taken five seconds, but when you run, it will also show a few NLTK uh, message. But in my case, since I've already run my notebook, I'm rerunning it. That's why it is not showing that message, but usually you will see something called as NLTK data but that is fine. As long as you are able to run, that is the only thing we need. So how do we print? So data, my zeroth index dot page content. Great. So let's see if I'm able to extract. That's the that's same. That's the only thing we need. Uh, our PDF was a scanned PDF, which was an image. But if you look at my data, it is text. I'm able to select. I'm able to run control plus A. That's the great thing. This is the first step uh, we have already covered, but I've used a normal PDF. In your case, you're supposed to use a very large PDF. It can be 10 pages. It can be eight pages. That depends to you. And obviously these are tutorial videos, but we will have end-to-end -end code implementation once we complete the video series. So just enjoy. Uh, this is going to be very fun video series, uh, very fun playlist, I'll say, and very long. I'm going to upload way too many videos. Yeah, so let's continue. We have text splitter and for text splitter, we use recursive character text splitter. Since my data is very less, since my data is very less, I'll use a very small chunk size. I'll probably use 256. Probably in most of the cases, I either use 512 or 1024, but considering the data I have, it's very minimum. So that's why I'm only using 256 as my token size. And chunk overlap can be 50. It doesn't matter in this case, but still. So let me run this. And once you have your uh, recursive character text filter ready, you need to split your documents. So what we do is we split our documents. Uh, I'll just wait for auto completion split documents, what do we pass? We pass the data. And then comes our embedding model. And I'm very lazy to write it from scratch. I'll copy it from my previous video. So it's not a new thing. If you are watching this video, you need to watch part two and also part one. This particular code we have already used before. So we use Hugging Face Inference API. We use this Hugging Face Inference API embeddings. We don't have to download the model. Why? Because we are using the access token. So we are using it for free. Obviously there are limitations, but fine for this video series, it's fine. So let's run the embeddings. But the only thing what you need to do is you need to pass your API token, which is your again face access token. And you need to pass the model name. In our case, the model name is VGE base English model because our data is in English. So English. And this is just the version name, nothing else, which is 1.5. Let's proceed. Now, what do we have? We have the data. We did the splitting. We also have the embedding, but embedding is separate. Data is separate. So we use a vector DB so that we can store it in a vector database. So let me use a vector store. 
a vector store and in order to define the vector store i have chroma from documents i'll just wait for auto completion from documents i have chunks i have embeddings all right so this again will take few seconds and uh, i just request you guys to take this screenshot of any part of this video share it on social media and tag me so that i can repost it and this might also increase the uh, connection from my end okay you might be popular it will also make you popular okay so it just took one second why because our data is very less uh that's great that's great actually uh, since it's taking less time now what do we have we have vector database ready we'll just use retriever so my first retriever will be so now from now on we'll use heading retriever 1 now what is our first retriever it's vector db search retriever search retriever so i just use vector retriever equals to vector store dot as retriever again i'm very lazy so i'll wait for auto completion as retriever and i need to define my search keyword arguments and uh, i'll just keep it too because i have very less data now again i'll use a subheading and this time my subheading will be retriever second retriever which is bm25 my keyword retriever that's it so we need to define it we haven't defined it as of now have we defined it have we defined it no we have not defined it so let's define uh, let me check the documentation i don't remember to be honest all right so we have retrievers so we have bm25 retriever we have ensemble retriever uh, the ensemble retriever will just combine my vector retriever and my keyword retriever so i just have to import it and let's use my keyword my keyword retriever which is bm25 retriever how do we use this how do we use this we use from documents if you uh, remember what i did in slides i had multiple documents and then i used bm25 score on my documents that's where in this parameter you only need to pass your documents now what is my document it is nothing but chunks so this will be my chunk one chunk two chunk three as a whole it's a document so you need to pass the document in your keyword retriever and you can also define the case size you can also define keyword retriever dot k equals to two that's it now we use ensemble retriever ensemble ensemble retriever which combines both of them so this will be my main retriever which will combine both my retrievers so let's see how do we do this we use ensemble retriever and inside this we need to pass what my retrievers are so you need to pass all the retrievers inside the list and uh, we have our vector retriever uh, we have our re vector retriever we also have the keyword retriever that's it and you need to define the weights uh, what should be the weightage of both the retrievers in my case i'll just keep it to be 50 percent each so for 50 percent i need to define 0 0.5 0 0.5 that's it so this is my retriever now uh, I have defined my ensemble retriever. I need to define both the retrievers that I need to combine. One is vector retriever, one more is keyword retriever. And weights is nothing but what weightage should I give to both of these retrievers. So I have just kept 50% from vector, 50% from keyword. 
uh, you can experiment this. You can try to keep this to be 0 0.2 or 0 0.8. It should balance to be one. So you need to see 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.3, 0 0.7. You need to balance it at one. Great. So now comes the main part. We have completed the retriever part. The step one is done. Step two is we need to augment our prompt. That is the template. And we will use the same template from part two. We will use the same template from part two. We define the system prompt and we define the context. So this context is our retriever. And then we define the user query, uh, user prompt, where we just add whatever the user enters, which is the query. And we use something called as assistant to wait what we get uh, from the response. This entire template is for Zephyr model. So it only works for Zephyr. So we quickly use our LLM. So what is our LLM? It's from a game face out. We need to define the repo ID. Now, what is the repo ID? It should be a game face H4 Zephyr 7B alpha. This should be my repo ID. And I also need to define my model keyword arguments. Model keyword arguments. Now I'll define this to be temperature. Now my temperature will be 0 0.1. And my maximum token, what should be the length of my sequence? It should be 512. Fair enough. <coughs> Great. So we have our LLM model ready. And uh, the only thing is step one, retriever is done. Step two, augment your prompt is done. Step three, generator is done. We need to combine this now. Uh, how do we combine? First, we need to use a Langston expression language. And in order to use Langston expression language, we need to have a prompt template. We need to have a retriever. We need to have output parser. We need to have a la language model. We have all those things. So we just have to define the prompt template. We define the prompt template my prompt template from chat prompt have i defined it have i defined it yes i've defined it it should be chat prompt template chat prompt template and it should be from templates from template i pass in my template That's it. And then I define my output parser. It's nothing but to directly call that function, which is it's, it's uh, str output parser. That's it. Now we define our Langchain expression language. In short, it is called LCEL. So we define our chain. We define our chain. And there are two input variables. There are two input variables in my template. One is context and one more is query. So for context, we need to use curly brackets. Define what is my context. My context is the retriever. My context is this retriever, the ensemble retriever. Copy, paste, and then what will be my query? As of now, I don't have any query. I need to invoke it. And before I need to invoke it, I need to run it as runnable pass through. Sorry, sorry. It should be, we need to add the chain. First, I add my prompt. Then I add my language model. And then I add my output parser. How is my output parser defined? Output parser. So this is my chain. This is my chain. Now I just run few prompts. Let's test it out. Chain dot invoke. So uh, let's see what is there in my data. Uh, let's run this. All right. So we have the reference date. This looks like a letter. I'll just add the address of the company. Or instead, what we can do is we'll just ask what year was the letter sent to. So who is this person? 
PN Kondal. All right. So let me copy this. Let me paste it here. All right. So let's run it. And the next step will be print my response. Uh, the first time when you run the invoke, uh, your chain, it's going to take a few seconds. And it will give the result. Hopefully, it should not take that much of time. And I just hope it gives me result very quickly. But let's wait. Let's wait until you subscribe and like this video and wait for the video series part four. Part four mainly it will be how you can evaluate your LLMs. Um, usually it should have been part three in order to evaluate LLM, but I thought it will be useful if in case I can use scan PDF just based out of community request. Uh, yeah, we have the result. As you can see, the letter was sent on January 18th, 1972, as mentioned in the provided context. Exactly the same thing I need. And uh, what else do we ask? What else do we ask? Let me ask something out of the context. Let me ask something out of the context. Response. Response equals to chain dot invoke. Who is messy? Who is messy? It should not give me any response because messy is not mentioned in my prompt. So it should not give me any response. I told you, I told you that when you run it for second time, it's going to be very speed, uh, very quick. You can see it took 31 second first time. It took four second in the second time. So it's very quick. I don't have personal beliefs or reference, but I can provide information. Lionel Messi is the professional footballer. It gave a response, but it told it doesn't have any data related to it. So it didn't hallucinate. It didn't. So let, let's try one more. Let's try one last chain invoke. So what do we ask? I'll just ask who is PJ cross. I'll just ask who is PJ cross. So let me print the response. PJ cross is the group leader of as Simli research as mentioned in the metadata of the document. Let's see. Let's see. Great. That's it. That's the only thing we need. We are able to run our document uh, very fine. Obviously, you might argue that, hey, Tarun, you used a very small document and obviously it will give you right result. Yes, you're right. Uh, but we will look into more complex uh, project once we get into the end part of this video series where we will try to upload a scan PDF of more than 200 pages. And then we will look into what should be the best chunking strategy. And we will try to explore different embedding model. And also we will introduce a new concept of persist directory so that we can save our data in a database using SQLite. Uh, this is going to be fun when we get into the end to end uh, project building, where you can also deploy it on Streamlit. But yeah, so far, let's go slowly and uh, hopefully we will get to that part where we will actually build projects end to end. But basic understanding of RAG pipeline, different techniques to improve uh, your RAG application. We looked into hybrid search. We looked into query ranking. We looked into parent document retriever. We also explored lang chain expression language. There are more to come. We also have how you can evaluate LLM. When we build evaluate LLM, I'll bring something new, uh, something different that you have not seen before evaluating uh, your LLM. It's going to be fun. Uh, the only thing uh, what you can do is subscribe and stay updated. Until then, thank you.